Hey everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and about a year or so ago, a lot of you wrote in to tell me about a Kickstarter for a $9 computer called The Chip, and now, a year or so later, it exists. Here it is, and it actually works for nine bucks, and we'll be uh, putting it through its paces here in a minute. But before we do, I do want to mention, in the interest of full disclosure, that I bought this thing and a few other accessories with my own funds on Kickstarter, so all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Nobody is paying for this review, and nobody is reviewing the content before it is posted. So let's see what this is all about. So, for nine bucks, you've got a computer that has an all-winner R8 processor built in. This is a single core processor, an ARM processor, and very slow, as you'll see in a few minutes. It has 512 megabytes of RAM, four gigabytes of internal flash storage built in, so you don't need an SD card to get up and running. It also has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built in, so you can connect peripherals wirelessly and get it on the internet. Uh, you have some GPIO pins that will uh, do some other things as well, which I'll show you in a few minutes too. So it has all of the uh, standard maker functions that you might want out of one of these single board computers. So by default, in its $9 configuration, it has a composite video output right here, and you can buy a $5 cable from them to connect to it. Uh, you could probably get a longer cable from Amazon, or you may already have one of these in your uh, box of stuff. I know I have a bunch of these, but you definitely need the RCA to three and a half millimeter here to get it uh, connected to your display. And because this is composite video, that means you're only going to be at SD resolution, 720 by 480 or thereabouts. Now for 15 bucks, almost double the price of the computer, uh, you can get the little HDMI adapter, which we will uh, be uh, demonstrating very shortly here in the review. Uh, and that just attaches to the top of this here, and you get an HDMI output here. And we'll install that a little bit later, but I want to show you how it runs in its basic $9 configuration. Now, in addition to this, uh, there is a portable version with a built-in display and keyboard you can get, too. Uh, this is about 50 bucks, and you get a nice little device here, actually. It's got a nice uh, touch screen on here. You've got uh, the keyboard, and then the chip computer comes with that $50 price tag and a battery built in too for running it for about three or four hours. And I'm going to be doing a separate video on this one actually just because it's kind of cool and I want to give it its own little uh, time of uh, in the sun here to give it a better and more thorough once over here. So what do you got for ports beyond that composite? You have a power thing for your USB, so you're going to need to plug in a uh, tablet power adapter or uh, thereabouts. You can actually run it off of your computer itself, but uh, there is a version of the Debian operating system that runs on this that might require a little bit more power, and I would actually recommend using that one because this is really slow, even with that higher powered operating system running on it. So I would recommend uh, getting a tablet charger, two amps or so, and running it off of that. You probably already have it, so you can plug it in there. And you have a full-size USB port for connecting peripherals. And if you have a keyboard and mouse you want to connect to it, you can, of course, get a USB hub. Uh, what I use is this uh, K830 from Logitech that I bought a year or so ago. It's got a trackpad and a keyboard built in. They got this one for about 100 bucks. There's another one that's about $20 uh, that works with a little dongle. Really great for these kind of projects. So that's the overall hardware. What we're going to do now is boot it up uh, just using its composite connection here. Uh, most of your modern TV even the fancy 4K HD televisions still do accept the composite connectors. So we're going to plug it into my scaler here. We'll play around with it a little bit. Then we'll pop on the HDMI adapter and see how it looks in high definition. Let's get to it. All right, so I've got everything hooked up to it right now. We have our composite video going out to my video system over here. We have a dongle on the main USB port for my keyboard and trackpad here. And then we have the power connected to the micro USB connector there. And what we're going to do now is just plug it into my tablet charger here. And once that is done, the little chip here will light up and will start booting its operating system. Uh, they have a full, complete operating system available for download on their website. It's uh, based on Debian, so it's a Linux-based operating system. It does take a little bit of time to low. They haven't come up with a nice boot screen for it yet, so you'll see all this stuff uh, floating on by. But what's really cool is how you flash it. So what you do is you take out your Chrome web browser, you install an add-on to your browser, uh, you stick a paper clip into the pins on the device here, uh, and then you just click a couple of things and it will install the operating system automatically via that Chrome web browser. It is really nice very easy, and I'm really excited to see where this is going to go because it means that down the road it'll be easier to install additional operating systems on it uh, without having to have a lot of knowledge on how to flash uh, operating systems onto devices to do it. So really cool uh, potential there, I think, as this project develops. So now we are uh, booted up here. We'll wait for the, uh, the screen to finish forming up here, but we are uh, very shortly going to be able to interact with our chip computer. And what I'm going to do now is switch over to the screen so you can see what we see here. And again, this is running at standard standard definition because this is running with the composite adapter. We'll hook up HDMI in a few minutes and get uh, the full experience here. So 
Here we go, finally, uh, we are at the main screen. And what they've done is installed a lot of stuff on here that uh, you might want to play with. So this is a nice uh, way to kind of get yourself into the door with this. I'm gonna start with the web browser. Uh, you'll see that I already configured the Wi-Fi on here, so we are connected to my local network, so that worked fine. Uh, we're gonna go over to the Ice Weasel uh, browser, which is the one that they uh, recommend you use with this, and uh, we'll let that load. You'll see just how slowly things come up on here. So this is not going to be uh, even the experience you'll have with the Raspberry Pi 3. It is a very, very slow processor uh, that does take a little bit of time to do what you want it to do, but uh, for nine bucks, you are able to do the basics. So here we go, the web browser is loaded up. Now you'll of course know that these days, most websites are not designed to work in a screen size this small. Uh, but you can definitely get on the web with it. We'll go to my YouTube channel first. I'm not anticipating being able to play back any video with it, but we'll give it our best shot here and see what happens. And uh, we'll give it a second for everything to load in. You can again see just that this is not gonna be a uh, very high-end experience here. Let's wait for this to load and uh, a few more seconds here, hopefully. All right, that took about 45 seconds or so just to get to where we are right now. So again, don't expect this to be uh, your primary web browsing device. Remember, we're still not even at an HD resolution here either. So I don't think the videos are going to play here, but the page is still loading. So let's see what happens, but I don't anticipate being able to actually watch anything on my YouTube channel. Let me scroll down a little bit and see if we get some thumbnails and stuff. It looks like we do have the thumbnails loading up here. So maybe we can try to uh, load this review and see what happens. So we'll let that load up here real quick. All right, it took about another 30 seconds or so, but the video is actually starting to play back here. It looks a little squished and the aspect ratio is all out of whack. As you can see, the frame rate isn't all that good either. So we're not really going to uh, be able to do much YouTube browsing on here. So I think we're gonna count this out. All right, so I've really struggled to find something that can actually run at a, a somewhat decent speed on here. I did try to load up the mobile version of the New York Times and it's still loading the page here, but that was at least something that I could get to read something on it at least. So I, I don't, I, this is actually reminding me a lot of what it was like to surf the web about 20 years ago. It is really, really slow. And it's not my Wi-Fi. it's just the, uh, what this uh, device has under the hood uh, to uh, make all this stuff happen. You can really see you know, what $9 gets you, not much apparently. So I, I really can't recommend this right now as a web browsing experience just because of just how slow it is to get everything rendered on screen. I'm hoping it's more just a software optimization thing. This is still very early in this project, so maybe we'll come back and look at this when they've made some uh, revisions to their operating system. But there are some other things worth looking at here. Let's take a look at uh, their uh, little Excel alternative here. This is an open source uh, Excel uh, uh, application. So let's load that up real fast here and see how that works. That one certainly comes up a lot quicker. So I can maybe do uh, some basic math here and um, put some numbers in here and do a little bit of that. So I think, you know, if you're doing some documents or doing some offline work, things that don't really uh, require a lot of web browsing, uh, those should load up fairly quickly. But again, we don't have a lot of screen real estate here running uh, with the composite video. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are going to ask about game emulation, and I did try to install a bunch of emulators on it. Uh, the one that I did have some success with was uh, the NES emulator called Nestopia. So I'm going to just get out of here now and uh, load that up, and we'll see how that does. And the uh, the spoiler is it won't do very well at all. So we're going to load up here. We're going to go to games, go to Nestopia, and I'm going to load up my copy of Ninja Gaiden that I put on the downloads folder here. So I'll we'll open that up and I have it at a lower uh, window size too, just trying to get it to work better here. So we'll load that up real fast and you'll see uh, even like this title screen on this 8-bit game from 1989 takes forever to render too. So uh, again, nine bucks is gonna get you a computer you can do some word processing on, but uh, not much else. So we're still waiting for that uh, title screen here to transition over. If you've ever played this game or go and look on YouTube for some people that have played it, uh, this title screen certainly should move a lot faster than it's doing right now. So here we go, we've got the uh, title screen forming here. It usually comes up like really quick and this is definitely not really quick. So this is not going to be uh, an experience that you will enjoy uh, trying to play old NES games. It's really uh, running probably about half the speed or even more than, or even less than half the speed of a native NES might at this point. So I think from the standpoint of just getting something functional, it's there. You can certainly boot this up and do, again, word processing and some office tasks, but uh, anything else that you might be doing with these cheap computers, you really can't do on here. And 
And that includes, by the way, uh, the $5 Raspberry Pi Zero. And that is kind of a misleading price on the Raspberry Pi Zero because you do have to buy the memory card and a few other things to get it uh, fully functional. So you're probably going to be looking at about $10 or $15. But uh, for 9 bucks, you can try to play a game here. But you can see it just uh, isn't going to get you the kind of experience you're going to want. And I think it actually will uh, function better on the uh, Raspberry Pi. So that is uh, what the performance is like. What I am going to do, though, is switch it out and put the HDMI card on. Let's see if it gives us any better performance uh, running with that, but I really doubt it. Let's take a look. So we've got the HDMI adapter connected. They call this the dip because it goes with the chip. Now, again, this is a $15 adapter, but they also have a $10 VGA version you can get as well. Uh, over here is a hard drive that I connected because I wanted to copy some media over. This hard drive also has a USB hub built in, which is pretty useful. It's a Seagate drive I'll be reviewing uh, in a couple of days, so stay tuned for that. So we're going to go over to our desktop here, and now we're at the full 1080. I'm going to load up a media uh, program that they have installed by default on here called Genome M Player. I also tried VLC earlier too to see if it might give us better performance. It doesn't, uh, so we'll load that uh, default player up here. I'm going to load a MP P4 file that I copied off of the memory stick that's plugged into that USB hub. Uh, this is a video that just came off of my YouTube channel, and you can just see how long it takes to get anything going on this little computer. So uh, there we go. The video is playing back. This is probably running at five frames per second, if that. So it's really not a very uh, good multimedia playback experience on here at all. So this is what you get for nine bucks. Uh, not much in the way of desktop computer functionality. So as a desktop computer, this is probably not something you would want to use. It really is uh, quite slow. In fact, too slow to do anything really all that useful with. And I know it's only $9, so I should be setting my expectations appropriately, but uh, the $5 Raspberry Pi Zero does perform a lot better than this one does as a desktop computer. Maybe there's some optimization that they need to do along the way here, so we'll have to stay tuned and see what happens with it. But right now, uh, not something I would use if you were also looking at a Raspberry Pi. But I do think it's very useful for makers because uh, this actually can be a very functional uh, microcontroller that is running a full Debian Linux operating system. So for nine bucks, you can get this, install the headless version of their operating system that lacks a graphical user interface. You have to use the terminal and the keyboard to interface with it. But uh, for a lot of hobbyists out there who are looking for something more powerful to uh, power their creations, this might actually do a very nice job of that. Now for consumers, what's interesting is their uh, pocket chip configuration where you get the uh, plastic case here, the screen, the keyboard, and the battery, and of course the chip computer on the back. Uh, because they've optimized it to work well in this form factor, they picked out a few uh, apps that uh, work quite nicely and actually perform pretty well given the limitations of the hardware. So this might be the better way to go because it really doesn't work all that well as you saw uh, trying to do the things that we would normally do with one of these cheap computers. And it's kind of unfortunate too because their website alludes to retro gaming and a bunch of other stuff, but I'm just not seeing in it here. I just really can't see how it's doing all the things that they're saying it can do uh, on their website. So my advice would be this. If you are re really eager to get into this hobby of playing around with single board computers, uh, still stick with the Raspberry Pi. Uh, the Raspberry Pi 3 is a very nicely performing device, uh, very inexpensive, around $35 or so, and it has a huge community behind it. I do think this does have a lot of potential. We're going to be looking at this particular implementation in a video coming up later this week. Uh, because what they've done is really built a very simple way to get started. You can go on your web browser, uh, click a button, plug the computer into your computer, and it downloads the operating system and you're ready to go. A much faster way to get up and running than I've seen with any single board computer. So I'm hoping that these folks will take this design, uh, put some faster hardware in it, and make something that uh, is maybe a pro edition or something that maybe costs 30 bucks because uh, there's a lot of potential in how they're putting together their infrastructure here. And I think it's going to be very consumer friendly, but the computers have to perform a lot better first. So that is the $9 chip computer, and this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.